Hi, I'm George Howard. I'm sitting here today with Mr. Peter Lubin, who is a good friend of mine and a music, music industry luminary. Um, we're going to talk about a wide range of topics. And uh, to begin with, I'd just like Pete to introduce himself. Right, I'm Pete Lubin, and uh, I spent 20 years as an a and executive at the major labels in the uh, uh, music industry. Uh, now I consult to labels and publishers. I uh, produce records and uh, I, I deal in some uh, new technologies, secure encryption and uh, on-demand disk pressing, among other things. And one of the, one of the amazing things about, about you, Pete, and uh, we've known each other for getting on 10 years now or so, uh, is that, that you, you don't stop. You know, I, I, I've seen so many people in the music business who have a certain limited field of expertise, um, especially in the A&R world, um, and, and it's a very closed, kind of hermetic world, and they're not able able to get beyond it. And just, you know, given your introduction there, you've, you've done production, you've done uh, d encryption, you're doing some manufacturing um, elements. You know, how do you navigate these waters? Is it the, the changing industry or is it, is it out, of, out of necessity or interest or both? Or? Well, basically, uh, after leaving the major label fold, I went into the business of saying yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the phone would ring and people would say, you know, uh, I've got this initiative, this business plan, this. And um, I, as much as I could, I said yes. That's awesome. Uh, and, and not for the, necessarily for the money, but for the, uh, for the wide range of experience that it, it, it's brought to me. You know. And somewhat um, of a prescient decision at this point, because the people that have, have walled themselves into a, a specific knowledge base are, are <laughs> lacking opportunities. Well, I would say this, you know, um, let, let's say you spend 20 years doing A&R at the labels and suddenly you don't do A&R at the labels anymore. Uh, it's not like you can go to a mainstream industry. You can't go to the Xerox Corporation and say, well, I know how to pick hits because they'll, they'll laugh you out of the, the offices. So um, you don't develop a skill set that's easily translatable, that's for certain. No, I think that's an interesting point. And as, as the music industry evolves and changes and becomes less about, you know, the four majors and, and the, you know, uh, the indies or whomever that are kind of the content holders and it being more about music slipping into all sorts of little parts of our life, the people that love music and that want to work on music have to have a wide range of, of abilities to work. I mean, Xerox may be a straight stretch, but, you know, when you've got Toyota starting labels and, uh, you know, music is, is in a whole whole different place than it ever was. For someone who is, you, you started as an, well, you started as a, a publicist, right? Well, I started as a rock journalist. A rock journalist, okay. Yeah, that, uh, you know, think Cameron Crowe in Almost Famous. Okay. When I was a little kid, uh, me and a buddy uh, started a rock magazine in, in, in the very beginning of what came to be rock journalism. Okay. And, uh, we had to start our own magazine because nobody would let little kids write for them. Uh, so we, we, we published it ourselves and the thing um, uh, took off a little bit mm -hmm. and became something of an item. And so, uh, and at the same time, because the whole rock music industry w was being born, we're talking about 1970, mm -hmm. give or take, uh, because the whole rock industry was being born, uh, the whole uh, rock critic industry was being born at the same time, etc. So uh, I ended up in a place where uh, all kinds of people that y y you might have heard of, you know, John Perellis and mm -hmm. Robert Criscow sure. and uh, Richard Meltzer and uh, Lester Bangs, mm -hmm. they all wrote for our paper right. and we wrote for all of theirs. So by the time I was 15, 16, I was in Rolling Stone magazine and Stereo Review and uh, Craw Daddy and this right. and that. So, I mean, what's interesting to me hearing you say that is how nothing's really changed. The medium has changed. Now somebody that wants to, loves music and wants um, access or wants to be, have their voice heard, they start a blog, or they start, start Pitchfork, or they start whatever. But, but to my mind, there, there's a character trait there of people that want to write about music, want to be filters, that is, is almost an essential quality for someone who wants to be in the music business. Except there's one thing about that. Uh, the barrier to entry, uh -huh. uh, you know, for rock journalism, when I was a kid, I mean, sure, it was much higher, okay? Sure, you could say, you could aspire to it, but you couldn't publish the same day, right? Uh, yeah, like, a blo like a blogger right, could. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, but, but there's a corollary 
in the music business too, because uh, certainly back then,